Got a new series of walkthrough videos, this time for the enthalpy and entropy topic. So obviously this is the first one. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So if you want to try it first, just click on the link, try the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so for part A, we've got these four reactions, A through to D, and we're told the delta S sign for each of them, and we've just got to justify the sign. So in the first one, the delta S is negative, so it's getting less disordered. So why is that? It's because you're going from three moles of gas down to two moles of gas. So in the mark scheme, all you had to say was something like that. I've just put that in as an extra explanation. So it's getting less disordered, because you've got fewer moles of gas on the product side. Next one, we're going from liquid H2O to gaseous H2O, so obviously it's getting more disordered, and that's why you've got that positive delta S. And C now, so delta S is negative for C, so why would that be? Why is it getting less disordered? It's because you're going from gas to liquid. And D, delta S is positive, so it's getting more disordered. Why would that be? one mole of gas to two moles of gas. So moving on to part B in the calculations. So the first thing you've got to do is show that the entropy change delta S for the, this reaction, the decomposition of calcium carbonate, is that value there, 0.165 kilojoules per kelvin per mole. So to work out the entropy change, it's the entropy of the product minus the entropy of the reactants I call this the SPA equation after the shop, because if you think about the minus sign there between the products and the reactants, I just turn that into an A and it looks like the word SPA, and it helps me remember it's products minus reactants. So we'll put the numbers in, we get 40 plus 214, 40 plus 214 for the products, minus the entropy of the only reactant, which is calcium carbonate, so minus 89, the units are going to be joules per kelvin per mole for that, because that's what they are in the table there. And obviously, to get it into kilojoules per kelvin per mole, we divide by a 1,000. Second bullet point, show that calcium carbonate is stable at room temperature, 25 degrees C. So basically, we need to calculate delta G for this reaction, the Gibbs free energy change for this reaction. If it's greater than zero, that means that this reaction isn't feasible at that temperature, so obviously, what is the reaction? It's the decomposition of calcium carbonate. If that's not feasible at 25 degrees C, that means that calcium carbonate's not going to decompose, and therefore it's stable. Okay, so there's the calculation for the Gibbs free energy change. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Delta H was given for the equation. Remember, that's in kilojoules per mole. The temperature has to be in Kelvin, so 25 degrees C needs to go to 298 Kelvin. And the entropy change, we've just worked out, or we've just shown that it's 0.165 kilojoules per kelvin per mole. So that's given us a delta G value for this reaction of 129 kilojoules per mole. It's greater than zero, and therefore that reaction is not feasible at that temperature. And for the final bullet point, we've got to calculate the temperature at which the reaction does become feasible. So we basically need to find the temperature when delta G equals zero. So there's my Gibbs equation again, but I've got zero now for delta G. So we'll just rearrange that and get T on its own. So it goes to T equals delta H over delta S. So if we just put the values in for the enthalpy change and the entropy change, we get a temperature of 1079 Kelvin. If you wanted to give it in degrees C, just take 273 off that, which gives 806 degrees Celsius.